All right, I'm going to call this LAFCO meeting to order. The date is September 25th. The time is 6 p.m. straight up. I'm going to ask everyone to please stand and I'll ask um, Member Barry Hill to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. <coughs> Go ahead and introduce the commissioner starting on my left. <coughs> Ken Lane, public member. Vito Chiesa, county member. Richard O'Brien, city member. Bill Berryhill, alternate public member. Javier Camarena, Assistant Executive Officer. Sarah Lytle Penny, Executive Officer. Sean Wyatt, County Council. Jennifer Vieira, Commission Clerk. All right. Thank you all for being here. Now we're going to move on to the public comment period. And it's an opportunity for people to speak on any item that is not on today's posted agenda. You can fill out a card or you don't have to, but we do have uh, one speaker card from Karen. You made it just in time. That's what it was perfect. We would have we would have waited. Did you already have this pre filled out? No. Oh, you filled it out here. I wasn't paying attention. I'm sorry. Well, I filled it out before I walked in the room. But yeah, okay, it was in the the foyer. Um, okay, my name is Karen Conrado. I live on Hogue Road. I'm here to let you know that I um, disagree with proposed Riverwalk um, housing development project. Um, for many reasons that have already been mentioned, we, you know, as you know, the floodplain issues, levee issues, uh, water recharge, um, traffic, um, you know, the list goes on, it's unending. The only thing that I want to mention that I hadn't mentioned before is that um, the fields, when it rains, become very wet and farmers will often have to wait weeks before they can get back into the fields. And I think that's just, again, indicative of the, the low-lying land and the low water table and the danger of putting homes and businesses in that area. So I just want to continue to remind you to please observe carefully and um, vote no if this ever comes in front of you. Thanks. Thank you very much, Karen. All right. Seeing no one else, we will close the public comment period. A correspondence item three in the news. I know there's some articles attached to it. Uh, read that at your leisure. I'm going to go on to item four, which is declaration of conflicts and disqualifications. Any? None. None. None here. Richard. Any? No. None. No disqualifications. All right. Uh, the consent items, uh, we will take them all as, as one, unless a member would like to pull any of the items. Seeing none, anyone in the public want to comment on any of the consent items? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second on the consent item. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion passes 3-0. Um, no public hearing, other business. Item 7A, discussion and direction regarding policy 15, out of boundary service contracts or agreements. Yes. Sarah? So the commission recently approved um, some minor updates to its policies and procedures document at our last meeting. Um, during staff's review of the policies and procedures as a whole, we noted that policy 15, which is your um, out of boundary service agreements, uh, that section hadn't been updated in about a decade, and um, staff has been seeing some trends with the use of that section that we wanted to bring before you tonight uh, just to get some feedback and um, some direction that could possibly lead to some uh, clarifications of that section. So just by way of background, the regulatory setting here for uh, the Commission's policy is actually Government Code Section 56133. Uh, that's the requirement that LAFCO approve um, any extended service outside a city or district prior to them extending it. And that code section outlines two scenarios for um, out-of-boundary service extensions. The first is for proposals inside an agency's sphere of influence. Those can be approved if the commission finds that they're in, in anticipation of a later change or a later annexation. 
when a service is proposed outside a sphere of influence, it must be in response to a health and safety um, need to existing residents. There's limited exceptions, uh, which we'll get into a little later on, um, but mostly those are for non-potable water, or, um, even uh, extending or, or exchanging ag water and what I call like-for-like -like service agreements between agencies. So why does this regulation exist? Um, it, it's really only been um, codified since, I think, 2001. Um, but it was created as part of LAFCO law to eliminate a loophole uh, where cities and districts were, instead of um, going through the annexation process, they were extending services outside their boundary without any actual oversight. And so that was causing um, not only some, some problems between agencies that were maybe, um, maybe confused over whose service area was whose, but also caused some problems for LAFCOs who may have had a sphere of influence area already defined and another agency extending services into that area. Um, so 56133 was just created to give a little bit of that, that extra oversight, um, but also to reduce um, that, that possibility of a loophole where agencies were going ahead and extending services without annexing. So the commission adopted policy 15 in order to carry out that requirement of the government code. And that policy first emphasizes that annexation is always the preference. Um, but it also acknowledges that there are situations and scenarios where servicing something outside an agency's boundary is appropriate. Um, it gets into a discussion about factors for health and safety. It also acknowledges that at times an agency may want to serve one parcel instead of an entire area, and it doesn't make sense to annex that whole area at that time. Um, there's also a section of policy 15, which is attached in full to the report, that delegates approval authority to the executive officer in, in limited scenarios, which I'll get into here. So policy 15, uh, the commission is delegated authority to the executive officer to approve um, those types of requests for extended services only when they address a health and safety concern for existing development. And we've noted that that, um, while may have originally been intended to address requests from a single family dwelling that's got a failed well, those are probably the most common ones that we get, um, it didn't necessarily distinguish between if it's a commercial use, uh, the location of the use, if it's far removed from the city or the, the district, if it's outside a sphere, or if it's potentially growth inducing. Um, that section also states that all new development must be forwarded to the commission for review. And we've, uh, Javi and I have discovered that that is also sort of a broad statement and it doesn't necessarily contemplate some of the more minor requests that we receive, which are technically classified as new development, which would be somebody say, um, building a new house on a vacant lot or even replacing one that was um, burnt by a fire, adding an accessory dwelling unit, things that um, a city considers new development and are new in the sense that there wasn't anything um, there previously potentially. So those, according to the current policy, the very strict interpretation of the current policy would require commission review. And we don't necessarily believe that was the intent to have every addition to a house or accessory dwelling unit come before the commission. So there's an opportunity there to clarify some language, um, but the reason I'm bringing this up to the commission for discussion is that would also, in a sense, enhance staff's authority. So there's a, a comfort level there of wanting to make sure that the commission um, would potentially be comfortable with, with extending that authority. Something else to note about policy 15, and this is, this is one of the good things, in 2013, um, the section about area-wide approvals was, was significantly amended and enhanced. And the commission has used that numerous times since then to accommodate island areas um, and other neighborhoods that are slated for future annexation but are being improved sort of incrementally. And we anticipate also seeing those types of applications for the county's uh, ARPA projects coming soon. So the reason why that um, section had been amended in 2013 was to make sure that when the commission approves, say, sewer service to an entire island, 
that those individual parcels do not have to come back to um, myself or the commission as a whole anytime they want to um, build a new house or um, construct anything that would be considered that new development. So we made sure that the language in, of the area-wide approvals covers them and prevents them from having to do any sort of subsequent individual application until they hopefully someday annex. One other thing I wanted to bring up, which is a recent trend that you're probably familiar with, because I think I've, I've brought it up before during the legislative updates, is um, recently authority has been granted to the State Water Resources Control Board to mandate what they call consolidations of water and sewer systems. And what that means is they do have, they possess the authority to mandate um, a public agency, a city or a district, to assume a failing water or sewer system and, and basically provide service, take over service for that. And that's intended for disadvantaged communities. Um, there's an entire process that they have to go through before it could be considered mandated. Of course, they look for um, the city or the district to be willing to provide it first. And there is a provision where it needs to go, still go through the LAFCO process, albeit with very little discretion on our part after they've already potentially mandated it. But that's just something to be aware of um, as it sort of interplays with the, the requirements under government code. Another thing I wanted to highlight was the exemptions under government code section 56133. Um, throughout the state, there have been some LAFCOs that have identified problems with cities and districts uh, reading that section and, and self-exempting. In other words, they make their own interpretation about um, whether or not they fit one of those categories and they declare themselves exempt. We haven't had that yet in Stanislaus County, although there's been other LAFCOs that have decided to change their policies to <coughs> attempt to require them to come to LAFCO first before self-exempting. Um, could you tell me like what an example? they would say uh, to... So <coughs> this would be an instance where we would have to have observed it either on their agenda or, or during their approval process. Um, but they would take an item to their, let's say it's the city, they would take an item to their city council saying, we're going to go serve whatever use with water and leaving LAFCO out of the process or actually saying as part of the item, um, it's exempt from any other further review based on whatever exemption they're identifying it as. You know, uh, it's non-potable water, so we're exempting ourselves or, or whatever the case may be. We, honestly, we have not seen it yet. The other um, LAFCOs that have seen it, um, it's probably come pretty close to litigation because they're, they're in arguments with the LAFCO over, over whether or not it should come through the LAFCO or not. Um, we take the stance of, here's this code section, we're the resource for you in interpreting this section. We haven't come across a case yet where somebody has argued with an interpretation of you know it being non-potable water or not, or, or whatever the case may be for their exemption. We've actually had sort of the reverse experience where, um, in one case, City of Ceres, uh, when they were proposing to serve water to Monterey Park Tract Community Service District, which is already an authorized water provider, we actually informed them, you are exempt because you're doing like-for-like -like services, sorry, <laughs> like-for-like services in two entities that are already authorized by LAFCO to provide water. So you are exempt. And we gave them a letter saying, yeah, you're already exempt. So that, that for us has been a, a positive. And so I'm hoping this doesn't come up for us, um, but we have seen LAFCOs that have at least attempted to alter their policies to, to, in an attempt to prevent that. We sort of take the more educational stance. If it's, a, if it's something in the code that you're not understanding or, or that you're questioning, you come to us and ask about it because we're the experts on that section. But Thank you. We'll see. <laughs> and I just want to mention, so timing and fees related to these types of reviews. Um, the, the lowest level review, the executive officer review, is $500. That's done usually in two to three days. Um, the fees and the time frames go up from there if it does require commission review. Um, I will say that um, cities and districts that work with us where we know 
a request is coming and we can actually start the noticing while knowing that it's going to their board or their commission uh, or their city council um, we can sort of align those time frames where we could have that approval done like in two weeks or something a little bit more reasonable um, but it, that's all dependent on the city or district reaching out to us sooner rather than later and us being able to notice it um, so those you know we're not really proposing to, to change anything there that's more just as a uh, FYI regarding how that process works So the recommendation at this point is just to receive the information and discuss any potential concerns that you may have regarding policy 15 related to out of boundary service extensions and then potentially direct staff to return with proposed clarifications to the policy as needed. Okay. And I'm available for questions. Perfect. Any questions, please? Uh, yes. Um, Sarah, thank you. Thank you. That's, uh, that was good. During uh, reading, I read the staff report, not the uh, actual policy 15. Um, there's a lot of health and safety issues that come to us and then it's a food fight over um, fire districts, water districts, and others. Since the water district and the fire districts are not part of LAFCO, um, I don't think we should really get involved in their food fight unless they want to join LAFCO. And that's, that's a topic that will probably be returning to us soon as well. <laughs> okay. That's uh, yeah. because, you know, it's, uh, when we had to do the annexation because of a failed sewer system in the um, mobile home park, yep. Salida cried, I'm losing revenue, but you have less area to cover. It's a, it's a trade-off. You don't have to, but I'm losing revenue. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> if, if revenue is more important than health and safety, join LAFCO and and help us solve the problem. Yeah. Okay, that was one. Um, have you updated your fees? Yes. So those were updated uh, a couple months ago, actually, earlier this year. I must have been gone. It was. Was it? Might a have been a consent item. <laughs> now that I think about it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Those. Those are my uh, two, and the exemption has to be clarified. Yeah, you know, I was part of the Monterey track um, and had annexation, or not, excuse me, out of boundary service um, for the water and that sort of thing. There was a lot of discussion that went on between the county and the city of Ceres. Um, you know, and it was really once it all came together, I thought it came together very well. Um, there was a lot of, uh, who's going to pay for it? You know, how are we going to get the money? Right? And that sort of thing. But, uh, you know, through the state's involvement and how they got their money to help pay to get the services out there, because it was quite a ways out. Um, it worked out well. I didn't see, I don't know, you were a part of that. I didn't really feel at that time that there was any any problems between the two agencies, anyway, us and the county, working together to get this issue resolved. And we had another one, too, um, the, the mobile home park. Yeah. There, yeah, and Grayson and, and uh, service, or excuse me, Grayson and Central. That was another one that worked out. And, you know, that I, I mean, the county, I mean, honestly, for us, in series, and I'm talking, you know, back when I was there, we really had a great relationship. And I think, you know, um, when you talk about out, out of boundary services in, in any of our cities, we have to talk to the county because that's where it's at, right? And, and you guys have been remarkably encouraging and helpful and, and through that whole process. So I was you know, involved in both of those. And I thought, you know, any changes seem to me? I don't think so. I think it worked out really well, yeah. honestly. Um, so anyway, that's my, my opinion from experience. So, uh, well, Bill? No. no. So when I look at this, so ADUs is a great example because you're going to find an exception probably to every rule mm -hmm. when you when you look through it. But ADUs, if the current residence is being served, I wouldn't consider that new development mm -hmm. if the capacity. When I think about the county islands where we've slowly been plotting through in West Modesto, uh, getting state grants, uh, using our CDBG funds, and you know, number one is that people have sewer and septic. And, and most of those were in the sphere of Modesto, so it's a little easier conversation than outside of the sphere. 
but but the reality is what you said a, a hookup if because people voluntarily hook up it shouldn't be considered uh, anything I mean if they were to build ADUs it wouldn't be considered new service in my view yeah. uh, and because we're trying to build housing it makes absolute sense and I, I'm not sure that should have to come to our board I think that you should have some authority on generally on those types of situations I think you would want some cover from this board and when we're talking about annexations outside of the sphere I can think of you talked about Monterey Park Riverdale track mm -hmm. Modesto all of West Modesto I, it, it's a continual discussion Houston got some uh, some grant money to put in a new well to run water out to what is Mo's Oasis, but there's a mobile home park there. It's still not completed, but it's in the works. The, the State Water Board is trying to get Houston to run out to the mobile home park by the old landfill, and at no cost to Houston. And, but there is a cost to Houston, and that's where it, it gets the sticky wicket. Mm -hmm. if, if they have to put in a tank or a new well and they don't need to put it in today, it ends up on the ratepayers of the whole city. When they need a new well, there's no cost to them at all. It's actually a, a, a positive. And so we need to be cognizant of things. But when we talk about the forced consolidations, that worries me. I know that it's in court right now because they, the State Water Board has tried this in a couple of instances. And, and not that, because we just talked about getting along and, and serving people. And in the end, it was better because you have more rate payers. Right. And as long as you're not on the hook for any of those costs, I think it's okay, but it's not always that way. And mm -hmm. there's lots of people asking for water for health and safety reasons that can't get water. And I, I would hope that that we could work towards a policy where uh, you know projects outside of the sphere probably still come back to this board because I can think of a couple that are coming up a school district that has a water challenge and were turned down by one of the cities. And so they're going to a further city, which doesn't make a lot of sense. Yeah. But the funny part is the State Water Board is a part of this conversation, and the State Water Board looks at all the failed water systems right on, on four corners, and they want to find service for each one of those. And, you know, and this the school district that would have to pay the lion's share. So there's, it's, it's a sticky wicket, again. And I, I, I'm not sure that you would want to make decisions that weren't ministerial and I would consider the ADUs the example of that I would consider that ministerial and I, I don't know that has to come to us I don't know how everyone else feels right yeah, but Makes sense. but most of those are in the sphere so it's it's easier uh, anything that's new development growth inducing potentially growth inducing Major L has really put a stop to any housing that's not ag housing that's you know not in a community plan so that gives a little bit of protection right now while that's in effect. They're not going to be going, you know, expanding Denaire, or expanding Keys or uh, some area where there might be a need. Um, the Dell Estee system, I'm trying to, I'm starting to think. We, hey, have, we have that already called out in the policy too. You, you do, so that, all right. Yeah. So that's not a problem. It's covered. All right. But it only if um, there might be an instance where so Del Este is really just the old outline of Del Este. So let's say um, well, like Salida or something that's currently being served by Del Este expands, then we might need to come back with, at that point I think I'd recommend coming back with like an area wide to cover the remainder of the area of whatever they're, they're looking to serve instead of coming back on the individual basis again. Okay, because that's where I, uh, there's only a couple of instances where I think, again, yeah. And I, I'm just saying, I don't know how comfortable you are, but if I was in your chair, anything that was outside of a sphere, uh, you punt it to us and put it. Yeah. You know, I think that's a that's a good measure because that would also indicate that it's either going to be potential growth inducing or something that yeah. that the commission hasn't already um, anticipated or contemplated with the sphere itself. It's yeah. in the issue on water, potable water, uh, drinking water is becoming a lot greater, not because there's more constituents showing up in the water, it's because the allowable amount keeps going down. And and so now everyone's getting hung up. They added a constituent, I can't even remember, not Chrome 6, but 
It, I'm, I'm so bad with all these. Chrome 6 T and T arsenic. TCP. Arsenic can be treated nitrates, mm -hmm. yep. but there's, I think it's Chrome 6 mm -hmm. now is something that they, they added to the constituency. So someone's good on 3 and not okay on 1 and, and they're getting snagged up. And so we've got to be cognizant of that. Again, but it still has to fit because most of these are served in the unincorporated area. Generally, if it's outside of the sphere, and we have to be careful about anything that's growth inducing. And I think that that's one of our charges, right? Here at LAFCO, it's about not creating islands, uh, making sure growth is headed in the right direction that it makes sense, is sensible. So, I, I don't know. I've been talking a lot, and hopefully, you heard some things in yeah. general direction. This has nothing to do with with LAFCO, but the State Water Board on 1 October is reducing the contaminant levels within the drinking waters across the board. That's so I am concerned if I have to provide water, uh, let's say to uh, an island right up there yeah. of Snob Hill, um, am I led getting myself into a, a situation where well, I'm now going to have to start treating my water, which I do not have to do right now? I think you have, we have some cities, Patterson, is, but but being under a state order, you know, there's there's more faith in the city of Patterson coming into compliance through wellhead treatment than there is a, a school district with 100 kids. Yes. Or yeah. something along those lines. So, uh, you know, but long term, you're right. And surface water is the only solution. I'll say that 100 times. You have to dilute the water, and then you can use wells and uh, dilute the water. But it's expensive to get there, and you yes. got to have a water source right. close by, which yeah. Ceres has a canal going right to the middle of their town and yeah. Yeah. pumping station. So, but you know what? In the long run, it, it's better. Um, wellhead treatment is just ridiculous, and it's like DNA. Every time they just find something else, mm -hmm. and you got to take yeah. that. You know. I think and well, that is a good indicator better. because they, better. they put in the water treatment plant, their rates went up, 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 yep. the highest, yep. and they're no longer the highest, right? Yeah. Exactly. So I, I think long term, it's, it's it good, is. good for everyone. So, have you have enough direction? Yeah, yeah I think that, that gives us a good start. Oh, I thought yeah. we muddied the water. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, I, I guess I would open it up to the public, even though this is a discussion. I, if you have any thoughts. All right, Karen, thank you very much. Um, all right, we're going to move on from item number seven to commissioner comments. I'll look to my left. I have none, thank you. None. Nope. N none with myself. On to item number nine, additional matters at the discretion of the chairperson, which I have none. Executive officer's report. Yeah, I'll just quickly note that we have a few upcoming items, including our year-end financial report, uh, we'll bring back a proposed amendment to policy 15, trying to capture um, some of those clarifications. And then also a municipal service review and sphere update for the community service districts on the west side. And our next meeting is scheduled for October 23rd, 2024. We might do an early quorum check on that just to make sure. I know, um, I think League of California Cities has a conference right before I'll that. I'll be here. <laughs> okay. But we'll double check. Okay. Very good. And that's all. That's it. All right. If there's nothing else for the good of the order, this meeting is adjourned at 628. Thanks. Very good.